Hey guys, it's Jess and welcome back to my channel. I hope you've all been having a very happy and productive week. And being Friday, of course, it's that time of the week where I take one of your study related questions and I answer it in my Q of the week video. So if you guys want any of your questions answered in an upcoming Q of the week vid, then leave them down below in the comment section or send them through on social media. Just find me at study with Jess on Twitter and Instagram. And if you guys find today's video helpful, then please thumbs up to let me know. And if you're not already subscribed, you should probably click that subscribe button down below so you get notified whenever I post up my videos. Anyways, let's get into today's question of the week. And today's question comes from Lani and she asks the following. She writes in saying, hi Jess, loving your channel. Thanks Lani. I have my year 12 exams next year and want to know how I can do really well and get straight A's. What's the best way to complete exams and do you have any tips? Lots of love, Lani. Okay, so Lani, I have quite a few tips for taking exams considering I have done, I've sat a lot of exams in my lifetime, a lot. After all of school and four years of university, there have been, there have been a lot of exams that I've done. So I've got a lot of tips for you and I've actually written them all down in a long list on my phone. So the first one I wanted to say was before you actually get into an exam, Something that I would always do, and it is backed by scientific research, is to go for a walk to help oxygenate your brain. So get the blood moving and get more oxygen into your body, because the more you can oxygenate your brain before something that requires a lot of focus, the more you'll be able to concentrate during that task. So even just for 10 minutes, go and have a bit of a walk around campus, or even do some star jumps, a bit of exercise, anything like that. That can be a really good idea. And then as far as when you get into the exam, first thing I've got written down here is to enter with a plan of attack. Oh yeah. So you need to know exactly how you are going to tackle your exam. If it's got a multi-choice section, a short answer and an extended answer section, then which sections are you going to be completing first to last? How long do you plan spending on each of the sections as well? So you know as the clock is ticking when it's time to move on. This way, Hopefully you'll be able to complete everything within the allotted time frame. And then of course, another thing to do is to use your reading time really wisely. So I feel like some students have the tendency during reading time to just wait with anticipation to get writing, but actually have a think about the answers that you want to be writing down as well. But if you want to earn yourself some extra time during exams, then I do have a little tip for you that involves something you can do during reading time, which is this. And I can't believe I didn't know this until one of my last years studying, but it's to complete or read through the multi-choice questions first, brainstorm your answers and try and answer those only during your reading time. Because on average, they say that you should be able to answer one multiple choice question per minute. And if you've got 10 minutes of reading time, the second that they say that you can start writing in your exams, you could probably solve the first 10 questions right away. Now on the topic of multi-choice questions, something that I can advise you to do is just to stop you from getting tricked with all of those, or caught out with all of those trick questions or trick answers that they put in multi-choice questions. So a lot of the time, your teachers and lecturers will put something in there that you've never seen before and you freak out and you think, oh my goodness, did I not revise for my exam correctly? And did I miss this? Is this the real answer? So instead of doubting yourself, make sure to cover all of the potential answers first and have a bit of a brainstorm about what you know about the topic at hand. This way it actually stops you from likely getting caught out from all these trick questions because you honestly know a lot more than you give yourself credit for. So that's my little trick for multi-choice questions. Now something else that I used to do in my exams is actually draw little illustrations and diagrams or charts on the side. So even in my statistics exam, I used to draw the little graphs on the side or even in any other exams I was doing, I might have had different illustrations that I associated certain information with. So you can actually jog your memory right down in some of those blank sections on the exam, anything that you need to, just to help you solve these questions as well. Don't feel like you have to keep your exam booklet completely neat. It's totally fine to show your workings. You really should show your workings. And yeah, use it if you, I don't know, maybe made up a funny acronym that you know could help jog your memory. Write that acronym down so that instead of doing it all in your head, it's written right in front of you and you're less likely to stuff anything up as well. Now when it comes to completing really long exams, 
Something that I do, and I feel like a lot of students are really cautious about doing this or prefer not to because they're worried that they'll run out of time, but we're actually not made to sit for two, three hours without getting up and stretching and taking a bit of a break. So if anything, it can actually help your productivity and your concentration to take a quick bathroom break and get up and just stretch, go to the bathroom or get a drink rather than try and use all of that time to complete your exam because if you're feeling really stressed or you're feeling tired or you just can't focus and it's already gotten one or two hours into your exam, then you're probably actually going to be benefiting yourself more if you take a little bit of a break. And this is for anything in life really. If something's not working, just get up, remove yourself from the situation for just a moment and gather your thoughts, change up the environment and then come back to whatever it is you're doing. So I used to always do this in exams. I remember my English exam. I don't think anyone really got up to go to the bathroom but myself. But honestly, it really helped me because it meant I wasn't really stressing that much. And when I did come back, I just had a fresh perspective. And also by the time that I got back from the bathroom, my subconscious had remembered something really important by actually just not thinking for just a couple of minutes. So yeah, if you feel like you're able to take a few moments from your exam, I would really recommend that you get up and then come back to it. So just go to the bathroom, get a drink, and then you'll actually be able to increase your focus by taking a really, really tiny study break. So Lani, thank you so much for your question. I hope I've answered it well for you this week. And if you guys want to send in your study questions, leave them in the comment box below. And of course, if you enjoyed today's video, then thumbs up to let me know. And like I said, if you're not already subscribed, then click the subscribe button down below to join in on all of the Jessica fun. And yes, if you want to check out some other videos, click the cards up there. And you can also check out my study skills book, The High School Survival Guide. There's a ton of tips about how to study for exams, manage exam stress, and even take exams as well. So I'll link that in the description box as well for you guys. All right, until Monday when I see you for brain food, have a very happy and productive weekend. Bye.